Ladies and gentlemen, this is Tosh Talks, and therefore, I am Tosh. Welcome, welcome to our little studio here. Today, we're going to discuss this object, and this object is a box by Marcel Duchamp, one of the great artists, some say the great artists of the 20th century. This is called a boat of valise, or box in a valise. What it is, if to quote Marcel Duchamp, quote, everything important that I have done can be put into a little suitcase. Bingo. This is what he has done. This is 69 artworks in one box in a suitcase that um, in 1935, he started working on this. He became obsessed, or he's always been obsessed, about uh, keeping his work together in some fashion and manner. So he thought of, instead of making a book or a, or a catalog resume at the time, he thought, why not just put all my artwork in a box and just make it miniaturize? If nothing else, Marcel Duchamp was a very practical man. So he designed a box that's actually a suitcase. And it was a limited edition of around 300 copies originally. And it took them about five to six years to finish this project. It started in France, and then he finished it in New York City in uh, 1941. When he reached New York, he had the assistance of uh, Joseph Cornell, the great American artist, and Exina Cage, who was John Cage's first wife and a remarkable artist in herself. So they helped build the structure. Okay. So first of all, you know, this is a new edition that was designed by a, uh, a French artist by the name of Matthew Mercier. French artist, conceptual type of work. I had this for about a year now, but I was so fearful of opening it because it's so pricey, so heavy, so important, that I thought for sure I would break it. And if I break it, um, my wife will be very angry at me, as well as certain friends of mine. So it's time for us to open this box. Now I remind you, I got this in the mail, like this. I didn't touch it for five days. I, it was too important. But finally, after five days, I picked up the box and took it to the studio here. And now, after some months later, we're now going to open this box, and I'm going to expose the world of Marcel Duchamp to you, my audience. It looks like an oversized pizza box, the box itself. Ellen has the directions, handle with care. I'm gonna put this over here. I'm gonna save this because this might be worth more than the actual box itself one day. So I'm gonna put this over here. Oh my God. Whoa, 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 oh, 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 mm. Jesus Christ. What the fuck? Holy macaroni baloney. Now, the great thing about this, okay, so Deschamps took, at the time, his entire work of great importance to him. He miniaturized it and made it into and put it into his box set. So what I see here is sort of a aspect of his famous uh, glass piece, um, Ride Strip Fair. I see um, oxygen, uh, Paris. Uh, this, this thing right here is actually um, a tube of some sort where um, it captured Paris air. So that's what this is. This is, is Underwood which is the covering of the Underwood typewriter to cover it, to make it, you know, make sure it's clean and not damaged. I, pre I presume when you purchased the typewriter at the time, it had a covering like this. So this is the Underwood. This is a place where men pee in. Urinal. It's called fountain, technically, but I think it was a urinal and it was something I pee in. And when I look at it, I feel like I should pee in it, but I'm not. Because it's a work of art. It's precious, it's very expensive. So then we have... Let's see, what do we have here? So this has to go down as well. We're going to open this up. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. 
Whoa, look at this. The famous nude in descending the staircase from 1912. Very impressive. And here you have, some, you have another painting of his. Each, each piece looks like it's labeled, like you're in a museum or in a gallery. This is like a portable museum in Marcel Duchamp's the point of view. And then we have another piece here. Whoa, look at this. And here is sort of like the glass case. That's see-through originally, so you can see right through it. It has the cracks. Very beautifully put together. Very wonderful. You know, some people might want to see the original works, but for me, th this is enough. I, can, I like this sort of the discounted $20 million version that you can put in your home and you can take it with you. And then we have this box thing. I presume we open it this way. Whoa, the chocolate grinder, the famous chocolate grinder. This you can't pick up, I don't think. So you have to, this has to be laid down. Um, and here you have individual pieces. Reminds me if like you're a traveling salesman going for the country and you're gonna sell your goods and you knock on the door and uh, some of the housewife answers or the house husband and you go uh, sir madam uh, I have some items here that you might be very interested in I think you may want to have it and you open this up in front of them and they go ooh ah whoa ah and then eventually no thank you in the very beginning uh, of him when he was doing art, Duchamp was thinking of keeping his work intact. Now, when he made this box, uh, realistically, it was a very troubled time in Europe. Of course, World War II was happening, Nazis were coming to uh, Paris. And so he probably wanted to preserve his work as much as possible. So, though there's this box does have a lot of humor in it, and sort of an obsessiveness, but there are also a certain amount of practical thinking behind it. Duchamp wanted to have something on the go. <laughs> yeah, there's a, your house is on fire. Yeah, I got, I got to pick up my Picassos, my Wallace Bermans, my uh, Ed Richets. Which, which one do I do first? You're panicking. You don't know what you let them all burn, right? Because you just got to get out. But Duchamp says, "Hey, keep this by the door, and just." On the way out, when you're running out in panic, let's grab it. And there you have the, uh, pretty much the entire collection of Marcel Duchamp's work in that sense. I think Duchamp looked at it as the ideal is more important than the actual object uh, or representation. So in many ways, I think Duchamp's feeling, feelings were that the representation of his work or art is just as important as actual objects. The actual objects are not that important. Nothing he does is impractical. And of course, Duchamp gave up this world for the world of chess, or so he claimed, but he was working on art all through that era when he was when he was a chess player. But again, you know, chess is also a form of sculpture. He said once that, that not all artists can be chess players. But all chess players are artists. This is Tosh. Tosh Talks. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you.